also the co-founder and uh, CEO of Forge, uh, Vish uh, Sahasranamam, my colleague and good friend, General Anil Kapoor, uh, guests, attendees, you know, CEOs of defense startups, the defense innovation community, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It's a great pleasure to be with you. Uh, thank you very much, Vish and Forge, uh, for the opportunity and the invite to speak and interact with you all uh, this morning on a subject of overriding importance um, as to how you know the defense space is unfolding and what are the opportunities for innovation uh, and and technologies in this space uh, though this seminar is focused on uh, cyber technologies specifically i will speak more broadly on next gen is because it is my view that many of these technologies are converging. It is at the convergence that the true utility lies. But I was pleasantly, I mean, I just gave a talk on cyber technologies to the you know, Batinda University, Central University, Batinda. And in the course of preparing that talk, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I was myself pleasantly surprised as to the huge opportunities in cyber itself. And that talk is available on my Twitter account at the rate of general underscore Raj Shukla. Those of you who are interested in cyber specifically, you could access that there, or it will be available in a day. Uh, that, that's the point I want to make about cyber, but I'll speak about next gen technologies in, in general. And this is the conversation I had with Vision. I've uh, you know structured my talk accordingly. They're great salience of these technologies in the defense enterprise, why they are so important to capacity building, statecraft, and war fighting. And steadily, their impact is increasing. See, it used to be capacity building. In Ukraine, it is war fighting. Technology is at the front of the squadron and company battles. Uh, so it is actually you know, making a, a huge difference. Technology is so intertwined with our lives today. That, as I said, even in the defense space, it is actively shaping capacity building, transforming the levers of combat, and strategic competition is being expressed through the medium of technologies. And therefore, in my view, there is a huge business opportunity. You know, whether it is unfolding in the requisite pace and scale is, of course, a different matter. But the three are connected. And that will be my pitch, the overarching frame over the next 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, I'm not saying it's a perfect endeavor. There are, of course, still huge challenges. I shall refer to some of them. And we could wrestle with the minutiae and the nitty-gritty to the question and answers. But the big conversation that I wish to make is this. And a good place to begin, maybe the Ukraine war and the broader European theater. See how events are unfolding there. They give you a window to the present and, the glimpse, and a glimpse into the future in real time. Because they are playing out in full uh, public view. Now, the first point I would like to make is that, you know, all out conflict uh, is back in full flow. Now, it may not be a very welcome development, but that is the reality. All out conflict is back. And we are seeing companies caught in battles, fire and maneuver. You are seeing drones, artillery, missiles, all the blood and gore, bravely and valor, all the vestiges of industrial compact, uh, industrial combat. So you see many times these questions get raised that listen, technology can never replace these attributes that are pointed to. I mean, it, the question is, uh, uh, is not a good one because it has never done so in combat over the years. Over the years, I mean, what has happened over the years, Ukraine has simply reinforced the old maxim, which is that the nature of war is constant and unchanged. That will never change. So this debate must end. Can technologies replace? Certainly not. But in the character of war, with where we see a humongous change, there is a big technological opportunity. Big, so I must you know, uh, address this question because it lies at the base of all our debates. In Ukraine, in my view, you see industrial era combat riding on the backbone of next generation technology. So just as the world is getting digital, warfare is getting digital. And I, when I say digital here, I mean all these next-gen technologies. So even industrial era combat, as it makes a comeback, the backbone is technologies. And these technologies are so high-end 
national security is so complex and sophisticated that DPSUs, the standard government organizations are unable to cope with it. That is the reality. And therefore, there is this huge opportunity for innovation, creativity, enterprise, and talent. And this will come only from the private sector, unless you, you know, reform the, your uh, DPSUs like the SOEs have been done in China. In many areas, these centers of innovation will complement the public sector. In some places they will fight, and there will be competition, and that's good for everyone. But the good thing that has happened today in Atmanir Bharat is that we have realized, the, or we are acknowledging the salience of wealth creation, technology creation from the private sector and in defense. This never happened in the past. Now, this is the big change. Back to Ukraine. See, look at Starlings. Who is powering Starlings? Elon Musk. He's the brand ambassador of innovation. How is it relevant to combat? So it is this off-grid, high-bandwidth internet. Uh, the technologies lie at the convergence of space and cybers. And within this overarching frame, there are a host of micro technologies that must be innovated. innovated. So huge opportunities for startups. Ukraine is as much a war, a, a war you know, between Generals Gerasimov and General Shaptala. But you're also seeing the contribution of Elon Musk, Peter Thiem and a host of startups and innovators. So, so Ukraine tells you that today private sector capacity, which used to one, one time, it was non-existent in India, but in the West, it was being leveraged for capacity building. Today, it is as salient in day-to-day -day war fighting in the company squad and batteries. The private sector footprint and therefore the innovation footprint has only grown. And look what these Starlink terminals did. Zelensky used them to address global councils, to beef up street resolve, to uh, give a fillip to troop morale, and they were also used to designate RT fire. Look at the great combination. So I do not see any contradiction, and in fact, technologies are only taking off. If you study Ukraine carefully, you also see what is happening in the civil space is happening in war fight. Data is becoming the new engine of war. Four new critical for two critical new generation technologies are converging. Leveraging of big data, algorithms, miniaturization of combat power, which is basically sub semiconductors and artificial intelligence. And one of the first to sense the opportunity was Peter Thiel. And you have this Palantir algorithm. Is Palantir, the Palantir some esoteric airy fairy stuff? No. It is affecting the squadron troop company battles. Huge success. It's a great value addition to intelligence fusion. What does it do? It enables intelligence from, you know, civilians, from these mobile camera clicks, OSINT, NATO, American intelligence, all to get fused. It's a huge step forward. It has led to far, you know, uh, shall I say, uh, better battlefield management and precise targeting. So this is, this is the way it's happened. Look at Kherson. The Ukrainians got Kherson back because of the Palantir algorithm and they used it to, uh, you know, uh, used it to uh, great effect along with the high marks, which were precisionary. Now this precisionary and this algorithm were not available in, a, in, in battles a generation ago. So technology is impacting combat. And today, coders are as salient to Ukrainian battalion commanders as ammunition. They want ammunition, they also want coders who can keep doing this day-to-day -day coding with these algorithms. So there is this huge, huge opportunity for the private sector in capacity building, war fighting, innovation, energy, enterprise. This kind of stuff cannot come from DPSUs in the manner that they are structured. In fact, my pitch would be that the MSMEs also should become startups. MSMEs are a vestige of the industrial era combat. The MSMEs have to get far smarter, agile, and also you have to pack them with that kind of, uh, that kind of output. Look at cyber. The Microsoft threat identification teams in concert with forward hunting units of the US Cyber Command made sure that many of these critical infrastructures was so secure in the cyber domain that the great Russian prowess in cyber could not penetrate it digitally. 
and therefore they had to res resort to kinetic attacks. So if you go into the nitty gritty, you will see that technology is unfolding in huge in a huge manner. And now please listen to what I have to say. Look at what what Starlink has done. What Peter Thiel is doing were entirely in the realm of what big powerful countries could do. They were super power stuff. Space was not penetrated beyond Soviet Union, USA, India, and a couple of countries. It was, these were country things, exclusive clubs. They are now becoming company things. Is that not a transition? It is a huge transition if we sense the opportunity. All these technologies, I don't have the time to detail, but they lie, they edifice your electronic kill chains today. These electronic kill chains, which we see throughout, they are all these small, small technologies coming together. Uh, all these electronic kill chains are enabled by Palantir tools called like meta constellations. Today, swarm, autonomous swarms are being used to counterattack armor. At one time, it could be done only with armor. Of course, they are not perfect, but it is happening. Just study EvoROG, the secure chat system. How it has integrated civilians and told some 10 lakhs of civilian reports into your intelligence fusion. Think of it, is it, can it happen in India? That your mobile click gets integrated into the combat database and targeting is done. It is happening. So all these things, look at battlefield mapping systems like Delta. Please study them closely. There are a suite of technologies. The same technologies are being used to solve logistic problems, which took years and months, are being resolved in minutes. We recently signed the ISET with the US. There are huge opportunities in ISET. All these emerging technologies, artificial intelligence, big data, quantum, these are no longer just, you know, airy-fairy concepts. What we need to do is to take them beyond this seminar obeisance and convert them into real life stuff. And once that happens, so, you know, there, there is scope for huge change. Look at the other lesson from Ukraine, precision. Everything from javelins, IMARs, ATACAMs, it's all precision. That is the magic of science. It is the mar marriage of semiconductors and explosives. What is the business opportunity in India? I'll tell you, the army, you know, talks of 40 I of ammunition. It is entirely dumb. Much, nine, most, if not all, most of this ammunition has to be made precise. Is that not a technology opportunity? Is that not a business opportunity? It is. Can it be done? Of course. It is basically marriage of semiconductors with explosives. So the defense sector today is getting as imaginative, as creative as any other. I would commend to you a book called, you know, Inside China's Global Strategy by Ian Easton. There's a chapter in that of, you know, it call, it's called Of Honey Traps and Fox Hunts. And it talks about the Thousand Talents Plan. Linked to the CCP, there are definite PLA programs which are looking to get Nobel laureates from the world to drive strategic military stuff. Z says that, you know, talent in the strategic military space is central to superpower competition. Without talent, he says, it is like a tree with no roots and a fountain with no water. And what is the talent they're looking at? They are looking at Nobel laureates. Those names are there in that chapter. I can't quite recall them because the Chinese have unpronounceable names. But that is what is happening. So the opportunity is definitely there. Whether we are leveraging it well enough is a different question. That, 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 that we will come to. You need the same talent that you need in the civilian space. In fact, in India, we are wasting talent. IITNs are making food apps to deliver pizza to my home. How can we attract them to deliver on deep technologies? Of course, the gestation periods are longer, but the rewards in the long term are far greater. What if Elon Musk had re remained a developer of a food app to supply burgers? I mean, look where he has ventured. Now, this whole Atmanirbharta and Bharat. See, I, I just want to make one point of Atmanirbharta and Bharat. It is not about self-reliance alone. Self-reliance was has been a slogan with us from the 1940s. What Atmanirbharta and Bharat is doing, and here I'll paraphrase the Prime Minister, 
he wants he says we must unleash these forces of innovation energy and enterprise into our national security and he goes on to say by liberating them from the scourge of process and procedure now it is here that we are stuck we are not you know we have not been able to take but this is how it is hugely different and these many startups who have got these orders you please speak to them what opportunities have opened up so a huge step has been taken this is an atmanir bharta of a different kind i think it's a we are on the cusp of a military techno revolution it is a once in a lifetime opportunity we simply need to exploit and you just see i was talking about precision b a precision b is a broad term what are the technological opportunities here so from micro electronic cores to macro and mini drones look at shaheed that is also a technology marvel a country under sanctions like iran has leveraged technology to regain strategic heft in a european battle, uh, battle theater you know whole lot of sensors encryption technologies gimbals connectors lenses avionics thermal sights now who will sense the opportunity now here i wish to make a point you see the private sector startups for very long are saying ki sir aap batao aapko kya chahiye i'll give you my experience with the us army futures command they have raised a us army has raised a futures command two years or some some years back i visited it a couple of years back what is the purpose of the us army future command a four star has been created to sense innovation and drive it to their uh, their combat outfits and how are they doing it so it is located in the midst of you know in in austin texas it partners with carnegie mellon top most universities it has these cross functional teams of soldiers academics researchers entrepreneurs technologists they travel to say ipcom ipcom there gives them their broad combat philosophy from that combat philosophy it is these innovators who sense the technological innovation and the business opportunity this business ki army should say this is what i want and you will deliver this is dated everywhere else these smart innovators are telling the army that the gsqr is dead stop telling us what you want we will give you that which you cannot refuse now i am trying to tell you this is true innovation this is where we we need to step up so technological imagination business opportunity let us not say that the opportunity is not there let us not say that innovation is not happening in defense now whether we do it we are optimizing it is a different matter look at the geo strategic winds of the future they are aligned in the favor of innovation they are aligned in your favor they are aligned in favor of startups look at what's happened in ukraine the instrument of force has returned to the to the center of state craft war fighting capacities are back in business look at the challenge the ukrainians have consumed in one year javelin stocks which took 13 years to create the americans and the europeans are running out of stocks now when these stocks have to be built they will of course be upgraded to the current technologies is that not a huge business opportunity 155 mm the ammunition and the gun is an exploding business opportunity in europe now we so i mean the whole uh, the private sector has to sense these opportunities and and take the risks far from the tank being you know being having become irrelevant the upgraded tank the digital tank is returning and once again the europeans are not able to live up to their promise poland promised 14 tanks i think to the ukrainian 6 months back they've been able to deliver only 10 because their industrial capacities their digital capacities in defense are dated countries like japan and germany are overcoming their war guilt upping their defense expenditures and they are looking to global supply chains for uh, Uh, for delivery i do not wish to spend more time look at israel israel i mean isn't it? it the whole defense system is startup based that country is a startup nation you visit their units why i am giving you these benchmarks is because this this is the huge opportunity for us to touch, to travel i said as i said msc may could turn to these become startups 
and therefore in my view atmanirbharta in defense is timed to perfection at the very moment that the atmanirbharta in defense is beginning to take off i have pointed out to you these huge opportunities in the european theater they will replicate themselves in the indo pacific given the nature of sino indian contestation the defense market is only going to grow it is just has to happen in fact if you ask me for hence for atmanirbharta in defense can have only three trajectories if we do not reform sufficiently it will have a slow and tortuous climb but climb has to be there if we reform moderately there will be a graduated rise and if we reform perfectly it will be an upward zoom that these are the only three trajectories that atmanirbharta bharat can also please sense this opportunity now india today is a 3 trillion dollar economy economy i mean many people the all the economic experts say that it should reach 30 trillion dollars by 2047 whatever when india moves from a 3 trillion dollar economy to 30 trillion dollars its military has to transform its military has to transform there are many nuances to it but one major nuance is the military will have to turn digital it will have to be technologically enabled therein lies a huge opportunity you please have to sense it the fact that the rm has committed 1 lakh crores to defense domestic defense manufacturers next year the pie has to be divided between dpsus and innovations and startups so i it is my view that a new strategic military complex is emerging in india which has to be tailored to the genius it is has to be indigenous in content from aero india this was a message which the government has given even the oems foreign oems have picked up this message that listen if you have to do business in india it has to be linked with indigenous partners and they know now that they will have to do it because they see the market and they see india's geo strategic points it has to be indigenous in content it will be strategic in purpose which means we need to think through all this global and connect the guns that are being that you make for us will also sell in european markets and last but not the least while i say it's a strategic military complex it has to have business at the core and that is the transition that you know the defense forces the drdo and the others have to make to realize that you know it business also has to be a central driver it cannot be just the strategic military drivers so as i said to me it does seem india is in a techno military revolution and just see the home minister has been often using this phrase please consider this he says defense is coming out of the shadows of foreign policy in india defense used to be an appendage to foreign policy it was not one of our central drivers it is now acquiring an independent character uska ek wajood ban raha hai us wajood mein hi opportunity hai in sab cheezon there are huge opportunities these are some of the things you know uh, which we must uh, 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 we must uh, uh, grasp what are the challenges there are many challenges all so some of you know i will just point to one or two one of the central challenges is now that you see all this has to convert into orders orders and orders. uh a lot of this semi seminar stuff outreach stuff has to lead to action if it does this will determine the course of the three trajectories that i pointed out and one of the big changes is what we need in financial sector reform see i don't blame the ifas the ifas that whole system was created for a different era it was created for an era when there were ghosts in the room you wanted to make sure that you know there is there are no bad deals in the corruption cells today this whole financial sector has to reform in the sense that it must incentivize risk taking that is the basis of innovation it has to acknowledge that there will be failures failures is not corruption the ifas will have to become cfos in the sense that they exist in private sector entities now this is something which is a huge cultural change which is required uh, it has to be by us persuasion advocacy you know people like wish need to do it 
And you need in the financial sector leadership that removes these software bugs. And once again, I say this is no commentary on us. Just like the Indian Armed Forces. I mean, when I was young, I was told that you don't make technologies. You just fight. Don't waste your time on technologies. Has that reality not changed? So everybody has to change. So will the IFAs change. If you do that, you, you utilize things like the TDF much better. And Atmanirbharta and Bharat so far is focused on, what shall I say, the very base technologies. May I point out to you that there is a need for pioneering forays in global cutting edge technologies. Pioneering, which means risk taking. AI, by 2030, I'm told the market will be in Asia, $600 million. What steel and aluminum were to World War II, ships will be to modern combat. And in ship design and all the allied technologies that I pointed out to you, there is a huge market, and not just chips, microelectronics. The time to invest in these is now. If the semiconductor mission can so posit itself, why should we not have a parallel sand semiconductor mission? Call you what you will. Where defense set looks at the opportunity in semiconductor. I see it in the civil space now. Every ministry is talking big. We are talking of becoming the lead in green technologies. So the similar ambitions now need to step in into the defense space. And much of this military innovation today lies at the cusp of civil military fusion, which means technologies which will work in the military space will also work in the civil space. You know, that, that sets into motion a, 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 a different uh, a set, set of forces. One, uh, let me, another point that I wish to make is, see, the Soviet Union, not Russia, the Soviet Union, the Russia, they had a similar example. The Soviet Union matched the Americans missile for missile. They couldn't match it bite for bite. And that's why they atrophied. They didn't have an innovation system. The Russian army today, in 30, 30 weapon systems across 450 micro components or 450 components, you see in these 30 systems declining efficiencies on the battlefield because they don't have chips. So these, all these things, you know, are having a ready impact. So we need, just like America, America, Silicon Valley or Carnegie Mellon, they power the defense enterprise. We need a innovation hub in India with a military tone texture, now, whether that is Bangalore or that is Hyderabad or that is Coimbatore, but we need a innovation hub. This innovation hub where you have these young minds adapted new technologies with funding, this is what is going to change. Look at what Bayraktar has done to Turkish state craft. The Bayraktar has given Turkey a strategic heft, global influence, and revenues. So defense is revenue spinning. India today, I have been closely watching this for the last seven to eight years. I've seen some brilliant minds, some brilliant ventures and startups. In my view, we, we can create five to six bioreactors. Five to six bioreactors, provided we get our act right in all this. Look at, today you are, we are talking of the multiple variants of the LCA and Tejas. Egypt and Argentina are showing interest. Will this not lead to market gateways in Africa, Europe, Latin America? After we have big things. Think of it. Let's look at it. Let me point another thing. This whole transition to digital combat. See what is the option. You people know better than me that the Tesla is more a chip, less a mechanical device. Now in the defense space, the Black Hawk, the tank, the Apache, the American army is looking at digital successors to their industrial uh, avatars today. Look at the investments which are happening in R&D technology. R&D has great innovation, a great space for startups. These ideas must, of course, come from the military, but militaries are slow and conservative. Even the American military is slow and conservative. What is powering the American military is these ideas from Silicon Valley and the other places. You take the American artificial intelligence strategy on national security, 
I see 10 civilians, not one military mine. So that is the opportunity here, which is not being, you know, leveraged. Last two points I want to make, I'll finish in the next minute. One is, see, national security is a complex, sophisticated enterprise. We need talent of the kind that I pointed out. Now, whether the big players, the big VCs are willing to put their money here, get our guys who are abroad, get them back, move these bright minds from food apps to deep technology, this is a call we have to take. You also have to realize that defense by its very nature is long, one of long gestations. That doesn't mean that it is entirely philosophical and we'll keep talking and nothing will happen. But you cannot, you know, uh, peg defense on these quarterly balance sheet kind of things. They have to be by gestation if you long. There are greater risks, as I said, but the feistiness, the resolve and tenacity that the defense startup ecosystem has shown so far is, is, is you know, something that is, is very reassuring. And uh, I think, you know, it is, a, it is a huge opportunity. I would also make, want to make one last point. And that is, you see, this whole business of defense, national security, it needs ideation and thought leadership also. It just can't be, don't give me any English or product, and I will make progress. Outside the US, for example, the whole private sector involvement in defense is shaped by high quality ideation and thought leadership to their think tanks. Their think tanks. Those ideas are coming from there and they are powering this whole enterprise. Here, unfortunately, the private sector, nobody is willing to invest in this genre. If you don't invest in this genre, if we, our thinking is stunted, our execution will be stunted. No, you have to do it. So look at the areas. There are these whole futuristic pathways of evolution and transformation that I pointed out. Where are those good papers, those game-changing discussions? Now that, see, China is a threat and USA has recognized that China fooled them for very long. Every week they churn out one top-class paper or top-class book on all these issues of statecraft, technologies and all. We are lacking in ideation. While the private sector must demand orders from the government, the private sector also has to do its bit. If you are not willing to ideate to invest in ideation and thought leadership of your own futures, who will do it? So, you know about global defense markets, technologically incubation, look at supply chain statecraft. I'm told a chip today from sand to, you know, finished product passes through 70 countries. God knows how many, you know, other, uh, the deep complications involved. So what is our thought on this? What are we willing to do? tailoring it to the defense space. In the futures, you have brain computer interface, programmable materials. You turn to Hoover, you turn to CSIS, all these think tanks, these issues are being debated. And technology is being linked with statecraft. It is all coming from the private sector. So unless, you know, all these things, so in conclusion, I would just like to say this, that, you know, next gen technologies are the future. Uh, Many micro and mega initiatives are being, have been taken. In our country, they are in the infancy. But today, there is a long-term political commitment to this. Any time in the past, long-term. India is a serious player in defense. It is realized by most OEM. That is why they are sticking out. It is not to say they are not problems. I hear, hear those scripts every day. But they are huge opportunities. Many of the pathways that I pointed out do need detailing. They need detailing. They need, you know taking forward and uh, as i mean it's a it's a well known maxim that both god and devil lie in the details it's a once in a generation opportunity if we can find god we'll prosper if we you know do nothing we will get devil and we will get trophy and decay so that's all i have to say thank you very much for the opportunity.